The conclusion of World War II saw a proliferation of German scientists suddenly being snapped up by the victorious powers. It's well known just how pivotal German scientists were to the success of America's famous Manhattan Project, and the Soviet Union also recruited the experts however they could as they liberated swaths of Eastern Europe and Germany. These German scientists, now in the employ of the US and the USSR, were major contributors to the two most significant technological efforts of the Cold War, the Intercontinental Ballistic Missile and the Space Race. Few know, however, that Argentina, with its seemingly small global ambitions, also wanted to build its own team of German scientists. Argentinian leadership had nuclear aspirations, and the man picked for the job was anything but a straightforward choice. Argentina had been vocal since 1946 about its desire to the German scientists to create nuclear fusion for energy production. The entire issue blew up in the country's face in a February 1947 article in the U.S. political news magazine, The New Republic. The article famously concluded, quote, Argentina's determined atomic adventure and its frankly military purposes cannot be dismissed as the impractical dream of a small nation. International pressure on Argentina following the article's publication was intense, and the plans were soon dropped. Argentina's president at the time, Juan Perón, was humiliated, and the ordeal only made him more determined than ever to develop atomic energy and prove his country's peaceful intentions. To prove his point, the charismatic Argentinian leader personally hired scientists to execute his plan. Perón was particularly excited by a nuclear research project. Unlike countries such as the United States and the Soviet Union, Argentina's goal was not to develop nuclear weapons, but instead to generate cheap electricity for the factories and steel mills created by Perón's five-year industrialization plan. Perón envisioned an Argentina that was economically strong and energy independent, and he believed nuclear fusion was the way to accomplish that. The German tasked to head the project was physicist Ronald Richter, who was born in what was Austrian Empire-controlled Czechoslovakia in 1909. In 1948, Richter was invited to Argentina by Kurt Tank, who'd been the lead aeronautical engineer for the German aircraft manufacturer of Focke-Wulf between 1931 and 1945. Tank was appointed to Argentina's Aerotechnical Institute in Córdoba with the code name Dr. Pedro Matthias. Tank had been one of many German aeronautical engineers who'd wanted to sneak out of Germany in 1947. Various members of the group emigrated to Argentina using false passports during late 1947 and 1948. All the Germans were warmly received by Perón, who believed they could help rapidly develop the Argentine economy. A total of 184 German scientists and engineers were known to have moved to Argentina during this period. Richter arrived in Buenos Aires on August 16, 1948, with a false passport. Shortly thereafter, Tank arranged an audience between Perón and the Austrian. Richter did not have the credentials for nuclear fusion work. Nevertheless, he was able to convince Perón that controlled nuclear fusion from thermonuclear reactions was the easiest source of energy for Argentina's industrialization. He even promised the president that it would be inexpensive, with the process including commonly found materials such as hydrogen, lithium, deuterium, and heavy water. Richter claimed to have a design that would effectively produce unlimited power for Argentina. His device became known as the Thermatron. Perón was sold. He would later tell reporters that, quote, in half an hour he explained to me all the secrets of nuclear physics, and he did it so well that now I have a pretty good idea of the subject. The president instructed that a group of German emigre scientists be hired to build a top secret mega lab on the leafy, secluded Wemul Island. Wemul is situated right in the middle of Lake Nahuelhuapi in the vast, rugged Patagonia region. The site was selected partly because of its abundant water supply. And so Project Wemul, or Proyecto Wemul, as it was known in Argentina, was born. The goal was simple, create nuclear fusion for Argentina. Perón was so excited that he not only gave Richter the go-ahead to build a reactor on the island, but also provided a blank check to spend whatever he needed. Construction started in late 1949 with no expense spared. 
For example, in mid-construction, it was found that some radial pipes leading to the 50,000 cubic foot or 1,500 cubic meter reactor's core had been installed incorrectly. Without hesitation, Richter instructed builders to tear down the entire cement structure and build it again from scratch. Richter filled warehouses with expensive equipment, including a four meter high copper coil that weighed 50 tons. He was in complete control of the project's design, construction, and operation. The project lasted from 1948 to 1951, during which time Richter spent hundreds of millions of pesos building the mega lab on Waymul Island, complete with its own power plant. The project was not without its detractors. In fact, it was derided even within Argentina from the start. Perón had fallen out with many senior figures in the Argentinian scientific community, including the world-renowned astrophysicist Ramón Enrique Gaviola. Gaviola had cause to be upset. He had maintained pressure on the government to form a proper nuclear research group, only to see all interest evaporate due to Perón's obsession. Embittered by what he saw as a fraudulent project run by Richter, Gaviola would offer his services only, quote, as a member of Richter's firing squad. Such was his hatred for him. These misgivings only mounted when the project produced no energy during its first two years. The experiment on Weymul was souring what scant relationship Pedon had with the scientific establishment. On March 24, 1951, President Perón boldly announced that Argentina had accomplished nuclear fusion. The grand news was splashed on the front pages of newspapers the world over. The announcement came only the day before an important international meeting of the leaders of the Americas, and Perón further boasted that in the future, energy generators would be sold in packages the size of a milk bottle, and perhaps even free of charge. This announcement flabbergasted the scientific world. Two months later, highly regarded Dutch nuclear physicist C.J. Baker visited Wemul, but was provided with no scientific proof of Perón's claim. Little information was available, and no papers were published on the topic. Over the next year, several reporters visited the site, but were denied access to the buildings. American physicists universally dismissed the announcement. George Gamma famously said of Richter's fusion claims, quote, It seemed to be 95% pure propaganda, four and three quarters percent thermonuclear reactions on a very small scale, and the remaining quarter percent, probably something better. Edward Teller put it succinctly, stating, quote, Reading one line, one has to think he's a genius. Reading the next line, one realizes he's crazy. Manfred von Arden, the German physicist working in the Soviet Union, was equally scathing. He advised that people should ignore Richter's fusion claims, noting that he had worked with Richter during the war, whom he said confused fantasy with reality. Quote, a colossal bluff was how Richter's project was being described within the Argentinian military. Hans Thuring, the director of the Institute for Theoretical Physics in Vienna, offered a damning analysis. Quote, it is a 50% probability that Perón is giving credit to the ravings of a fantasist, a 40% probability that the president has been the victim of a huge scam, and a 9% chance that Richter is telling the truth. By 1952, Perón was becoming very concerned that the money he spent, about $250 million today, had been wasted. Perón realized he needed independent verification and established a board to review Richter's work. The board was unable to find a shred of evidence on any scientific merit in Richter's work. The president instructed that the board provide individual reports, all of which were negative. A further review of these reports was equally negative. For example, extremely high temperatures are essential for nuclear fusion to even be attempted, yet the temperatures reached in the experiments were far too low to produce a thermonuclear reaction. It was found that Richter failed to attain nuclear fission. According to one finding, all Richter managed was a hydrogen burn in an electric arc, which he bombarded with lithium particles. This caused an explosion so massive it cracked the concrete structure. Perón was notably shaken and embarrassed by Richter's fraud, given it had been Perón's personal pet project as president. 
He shut the project down in 1952, and Weymoul was subsequently abandoned, with some of the buildings being blown up. In 1955, a provisional military government wrestled power from Perón. The new administration was intent on investigating corruption under the former president, and the Weymoul Island project was high on its agenda. Richter was arrested and questioned, but was eventually released. Richter went on to do scientific work in other countries, including Libya, but he eventually returned to Argentina, where he lived until his death in Buenos Aires in 1991. Not all was lost with the demise of Richter's doomed initiative. Richter's lab equipment went on to form the core technological structures of both the Centro Atomico Bariloche and Instituto Balseiro, which remain important nuclear and physics research facilities in Argentina today. While on his buying spree for the project, Richter ordered a particle accelerator from the Dutch electronics company Philips. For decades, it was the only one in use in South America. Today, Argentina imports atomic technology to countries such as Australia and the Netherlands. INVAP, a public company born as an offshoot of the Instituto Balseiro, even manufactures satellites for NASA. In the end, Richter's nuclear pipe dream sowed the seeds for a well-established high-tech industry in Argentina's Pampas region. Today, the wooden pier at Wemul Island is crumbling. Beneath it, there's the semi-submerged wreckage of a boat. The only way to disembark onto the island is to jump ashore. Wemul is just 10 minutes by boat from San Carlos de Bariloche, the famous lake town in a region of Patagonia near the Andes Mountains, known for its macho cowboy culture, skiing, and tourism. The island looms ghostly and mysterious, with several large ruined brick and concrete structures as the only remains of the secret, shadowy, scientific nuclear project conducted in the aftermath of World War II.